The Innovative Genomics Institute is a joint research partnership, and so we fund a lot of research projects focused on genome editing. So over the last five to six years, people across the world have been using this to uh, study the world around us, to develop new and exciting uh, biomedicine uh, therapies, and then also to create different agricultural strains. We use CRISPR-Cas9 in cacao to make it more resistant to viral infection. A lot of viruses have double-stranded DNA, which CRISPR-Cas9 is able to cut. By making the plants more resistant to disease, we thereby can offset the effects of climate change. So this is the protein we use for genome editing. This is a 3D printed model of Cas9. So the actual protein is what is in white. This orange uh, band right here is the RNA. And you can see that it's binding to this darker blue uh, band. And so that's one strand of the DNA. And this lighter blue one is the other strand of the double helix DNA. Process of editing cacao, the first thing you wanna do is how is the uh, fungi and the virus is infecting the, the crop. Then you can go in and say, okay, if I change this gene, if I remove this gene, if I add this gene, I can then prevent the spread of the disease. Then you have a ton of seeds that you can then grow and you can test. So what we're doing here is we're doing just that. So these are cacao embryos, and these are what would grow inside the seed pod of a cacao tree. Um, and they're what we actually use to do our in vitro research um, and transformations on. So CRISPR-Cas9 is a desirable technology to implement these changes in genomes because it is a lot faster and more affordable than previous gene editing technologies that we've had. Um, so before where we would have to screen a whole lot of plants, um, CRISPR-Cas9 is precise enough that it enables us to do the work that we need to do in a shorter amount of time. Uh, cacao is grown in different parts of the world. Now a lot of it is grown in a certain region in Africa, but since it's grown in different parts of the world, if it might be depleted in one country, it might still survive in another country. So it probably won't be extinct in 40 years, luckily. I think one of the main goals is helping the local farmers. For a lot of these farmers, this is how they make a living. And so it's important that their fields don't shrink by 50%. It's important that they're able to grow the crops that they're able to grow and, and live off of.